All right, so this video is going to be about the, um, the rate of our glycogen depletion with exercise and also how that depletion of glycogen is um, a, a pretty much going to lead to the stimulation of epinephrine or as I like to call it, epi just for short, so I don't have to say that big long word. So this pretty much just lies around the uh, process of uh, glycogen lysis, which all it is is breaking down our glycogen that is stored in our muscle and converting it to glucose so we, we can use it as glucose so it'll go like this so we break down so glycogen we break that down we break glycogen down which is this that'll give us our glucose glycogen is just a bunch of glucose stored okay and in this case, we're going to use it as stored in the muscle, all right? So, I got this circled right here because this kind of sums it up, both graphs, ties them in together. The rate of glycogen um, degradation is linked to um, epinephrine production, okay? So, pretty much the quicker that you have to tap into your glycogen stores, the faster and more you're going to produce of epinephrine, okay? So, I'm going to start right here. Here we have the time in minutes, and then over here on the left we have our glycogen depletion, okay? So that will be going from top to bottom. This is going from left to right. Now, these uh, numbers in the boxes just indicate the uh, VO2 or intensity of the exercises, if, if you want to look at it like that. So pretty much um, glycogen depletion is going to be directly related with the intensity of our exercise. So first we're going to start with the 120% uh, of our VO2 max, okay? So what it's going to do is, as you can see, that the time frame for this 120% is very short because there is no way on earth that you could keep that 120% <laughs> excuse me, had a child in the picture. There's no way that you can keep that 120% for a long period of time, okay? So that intensity is going to um, allow you, or it's going to make you tap into that glycogen stores that you have in the muscle, okay? So you've, used already, you've already used the glucose that's already readily available, and now you have to tap into the glycogen stores because you're exercising at a high intensity. And as you can see, as we go farther across the board, our intensity gets shorter because there's no way that you can keep this 120% at 120 minutes. And if you can do that, then you're Jesus. All right. So pretty much, as you can see, it just kind of goes down. As the intensity gets less, our exercise time increases and as our intensity decreases we don't have to use as much glycogen because we don't have to tap into the stores okay so to sum it up glycogen depletion and glycogen use is directly related to the intensity of the exercise higher intensity the quicker you tap into that glycogen lower intensity the more you keep that glycogen in your muscles okay so Transferring over to uh, epinephrine uh, percentage or concentration during exercise is pretty much the exact opposite. So we have our exercise time down here in minutes and our epinephrine concentration levels right here, okay? So as you can see, that our intensity at 100% is going to be a short time frame as well, but it's going to increase our uh, production of epinephrine in our blood, okay? And as our intensity decreases, once again, you can see that we can exercise longer, but as the intensity decreases, the amount of epinephrine that you have to release is not as quick, okay? So you can see. So it's an inverse relationship. So if I were to combine these two graphs, this isn't going to be perfect, so I'm going to do it over here. 
<laughs> if I took all these lines and placed them on this graph, it would look something like this. Right there, the rate of glycogen degradation is linked to how much epinephrine that you need to produce. As you can see, between the two and actually combining, that's the relationship between both of them.